Hello everyone, uh, today's video I'm starting a lovely little job. It's a garden store slash garage slash uh, man cave. There's a concrete pad that's been put in here and I've been this morning to the timber merchants. You see, um, I've got uh, 50 lengths of uh, treated tantalized timber on the back, which I'm going to uh, I'm gonna make a start making some uh, stud walls up, some stud panels. What I'm gonna do here is just uh, make them the relative sizes on the pad probably clad them with featherboarding as well I'm going to put a, bit, a membrane in first clad them with featherboarding and then stand them up and we'll basically get forming the building as we go so first job is to get some tools out and unload a bit of this timber get the straps off first uh, you'll note here that um, the I've got the trailer on the back and this is an eye for Williams trailer and it's an absolutely brilliant um, sort of addition to to the van really I mean obviously I this this size van's perfect for me it's sort of a sub three ton van you can get it pretty much anywhere you can get a car can get pretty much all the tools I need on it um, but occasionally you do need a bit more capacity and that's where a trailer comes in very handy and I'm very lucky that I've got somewhere decent I can store this because um, unfortunately, certainly here in the UK, the thing that people want to steal almost as much as your tools out of your van is these trailers. So um, fortunately, I'll keep all that um, locked away securely. So let's get that unwrapped and get started. So if we were professional sportsmen, that would just be considered a warm up. Oh my gosh, only another seven hours to go. <laughs> right, so I've got all the timber unloaded and what I was hoping to do was basically make all of these panels up, um, you know, wherever the set height is, 2.3, 2.4 .4 meters, and then basically just stand them on. And I was hoping that the slab would be, um, just ignore that, it, it, um, some paint got put on it and it's weathered itself off. Um, I was hoping I could just stand those panels straight on, but unfortunately I had a quick look at the slab and um, it drops away out of level from this corner to this corner and then it drops away again into this corner, but sort of more seriously, I think you see this bit of fairly straightforward too across the end here, um, it's, it's hugely, you just see that gap under there? So that's that bit of forward to there is level, so what we've got here unfortunately, um, it's it, this slab falls away from the center each side and quite badly that side of him what's that eight feet and that's probably dropping away inch and a half there so unfortunately if i just made my panels up and uh, sat them on this slab here all i would do is transfer the issue of the slab onto the plate and it would just make my roof you know all over the show so unfortunately what i'm gonna have to do here is um, I think what I'm going to do is go round and put like a sole plate in, level and pack that up and just fix it with some plugs and screws temporarily and then I can build my panel straight on top and then I'll just resin anchor down through the whole lot. So it's a bit of a pain in the backside but you know as I'm sure many a carpenter will know it's, it's one of those things really you know maybe when this slab was put in it was just sort of asked to be a rough roughly level slab and you, you've got roughly level to a ground worker is different to roughly level to a carpenter so but you know it's not the end of the world we can get over it we've got the skills okay that's phase one of this operation straighten out the pad uh what i've done it has slowed me up i can't i can't deny it hasn't uh i've decided to put a sole plate all the way around which I've just fixed down straight to the slab. So that's obviously gonna follow the slab. And then what I'm gonna do is start with my level and level all the way around cutting little blocks uh, to basically stand another plate on. And then that'll give me something nice and level to go off. Uh, I've got sort of another issue here as well. It's not only the slab, he's uh, got a hump in the middle here and it's out of level. Um, what the guys have done, they've used a when they floated the floor, they've used a corner trowel on here, and you can just see they've over floated it, so this drops away as the ed on the edge as well. So what I've had to do is go along and put some little wedges in from the outside. I've kept them above the DPC, and I'll have to do something 
a bit better than that when it's all on. But yeah, so it's, it's sort of, it's coming at me from all angles. Excuse the pun, as you can see, look, there's quite a big gap under there. So I've just put that little wedge in there for now and sort of leveled it across. So at least it's sort of level across this way. And now I can just sort of work, start working and cut some little blocks here and level off, level all the way around. And it's got to be right before you start really. I mean, the other thing, I don't know if you can quite see down there, the, the, uh, the shuttering must have bowed a little bit on that slab because look, obviously I've, I've pinged a line down for this plate here. But you know, hey ho, keeps a grey matter going. So there you go, that's just about it for today. Um, it's just started raining and I think that just about sums up today. <laughs> There's not gonna be any uh, smiley faces and thumbs up, I'm afraid. It's, uh, it's been a whole day to pretty much get nowhere. Um, you know, I've spent most of the day messing around, getting this plates in level, but fortunately what I've got now is I've got a top plate, which, and you can see, I put it up on these sort of props. They're only every uh, 1.8, which is the, the length of the level, but at least that's nice and, level all the way around there ignore that gap there's a garage door there so as you can see if you look at the distance between those two plates you can see sort of how the slab was up and down it gets over to this corner and that's about its high well actually it's, it's high in that corner and then it humps about here and then you can see that's only about three meters look that drops away 30 mil so not 100 percent sure how i'm going to finish that off i think what i'll do is when i get the chops are out tomorrow is I'll put more packers in, probably put them in every 400 because obviously it's taking the, the weight of the building. So it's not uh, fantastically heavy, it's only a substitution with probably a trust and slate roof on. But yeah, just one of those days today, you know, some days you can make a real show. Today could have been one of those days, you know, I could have got all the panels built and stood up and the, and the customers come back, they're like, oh my gosh, look at what you've done. But unfortunately it's one of those days today is where they're going to come back and think, well, what have you been doing? So. There we go, anyway, tomorrow's a new day, onwards and upwards. Right, day two, here we go. I know it's raining this morning, but I've got the gazebo out. So I'm gonna get set up under here to do some cutting, cut a load of studs. Probably not gonna make up, I'm probably not gonna make them up in panels, um, just because I wanna try and save a few extra lengths of timber. And also because it's raining, it's probably gonna be easier to just do, do them one at a time. And I've got someone to help me today, so I'll get some tools out and start cutting some of these studs. Right, so uh, we're rolling now. Um, I've got this panel uh, stood up already and I'll quickly show you uh, how, how I've done it. I haven't made them in panels and stand them up uh, as, as you'd expect. What I've actually done, because I don't want to have to make another uh, floor plate, is I've, if you can just see here, I've cut another half lapped, another top plate, laid it on the plate that I put on yesterday, which is leveled up. And then I've basically gone along and marked it and transferred the marks down onto this other plate. So what I'm going to do now is lay all my studs out opposite the marks on the bottom plate and nail the top plate onto them and then basically stand the whole thing up because I've got someone helping me today, that'll be much easier. Uh, it just means that I don't have to use another four lengths of timber for a plate that pretty much I've already put on there. So I'm going to set a camera up and uh, probably put a bit, bit of time lapse just doing that.
So in contrast to yesterday, um, I've had an absolute uh, flyer this morning. Um, obviously all the time I took yesterday to set out this bottom plate is paid off because I've just been able to cut all my studs exactly the same length. And as you see, um, didn't sort of make them up in one panel, just fix the top stud on and then sort of drag them up because I've got someone to help me, which is absolutely fantastic. So I'm really pleased with all that. Um, like I said, I think on the last video, uh, what I can do once I get a bit more of this done at the bottom of all these, uh, underneath this plate where the studs are, I can put uh, extra packers, extra spacers, so that the, you know, the, um, the studs are bearing down onto the, the plate that's on the concrete. Uh, so really what I've got to do now is just get these sort of tidied up. I've got a half lap joint there that look, just need to bring that together and screw that up. And then what I'm going to do next is put basically a double plate. So I'm going to put another plate all the way around here. And I haven't lapped these corners because what I'm going to do is this, this next plate I put on there, I'm going to make it come across. So it sort of binds the corner together. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'll get all that, get that done now, get those, that second plate on there. Um, and then I've got a nice level sort of plate to, to build the roof off. What I've got a seven foot wide or 2.1 meter garage door opening here. So what I'm going to do, uh, what I've done down here is you can see that cross there. That's for a double stud to go in there, which will go up to about uh, 2.1. And then I shall put uh, probably a double nine by two across there as like a lintel, you know, timber lintel beam. Um, I've got another one to do on the other side. There's a smaller opening over there. So again, when I put that double plate, uh, when I put that next plate on top of that one, that'll go right the way through, bind it all together, and then my nine by two will come up underneath it, so it'll just all be bound together. Lovely. So yeah, really, uh, really doing great this morning. And uh, you know, we've got a bit of bit of blue sky. Um, it's a big, big lump of blue sky over there. I mean, I'm in, um, I'm in gorgeous uh, Northamptonshire uh, at the minute. And look, look at this backdrop for working. Look. We've got the church there, so I can go for a quick pray. Um, you know, get all my sins off my chest at lunchtime if I want to, but yeah, absolutely fantastic out here. So one of those jobs, it's um, a real treat really. Um, feel quite free and quite lucky to, to have a job like this on days like today, which is obviously slightly different to yesterday, but let's crack on a bit more. Got all of these double top plates on, absolutely brilliant. Uh, like I said, I didn't, I didn't um, half lap the corners because I've just, sort of staggered these over so they overlap so that's nice strong corner so that's all in uh, what we're going to do now is i've got i'm going to put a double number two this is the garage door opening double number two on edge here um, and as i said earlier then it'll have a double stud up cut up underneath it so that'll get a really nice strong bearing so what i've got to do that with is these lovely i've just been to another local timber merchant really really good stuff here a uh, number two treated timber so I'll just cut those to the right size now, double those up and put them in. So here's those two bits of nine by two all cut ready to go. What I've done is just cut one of these uh, stud posts that's going to under it uh, for a minute. I've just measured down, I think it was 220 um, and put a line there. So I've cut the stud to that length there. And the same on this side, so what I'm going to do now is uh, grab those two bits of nine or two and uh, put them in there and just put a clamp on them to temporarily hold them until we fix them. So look at my pencil, that sort of creeps up on you really. One minute it's a new one, next minute it's uh, only a couple of inches long. So I've come to that, um, that time that everyone looks forward to, new pencil time. So fortunately, I've got a nice stash in the van, but also what I've got is, there's the pencils, there they are, look at those, yeah, old bag of them. But what I've also got, new pencil equals new pencil sharpener. So there we go, look at that. That's uh, 
a little treat that uh, I'm sure everyone appreciates. So I know some of you might be watching thinking it's a bit excessive the lengths I went to to get it level but now uh, the ground raises up quite a lot here so as I walk up the, the garden path here you can clearly see I'm trying to do this in the sunshine but you can see how nicely those plates uh, we'll just sit there look see how nice those plates wind in now so it is a lot of work to get it level but I've got a really nice flat level set of plates to fit the roof to. So here we are, the end of day two, uh, markedly different to the end of day one on this job. Um, I've got on really, really well today. Um, obviously I've had help, which makes a big, big difference. I've got all my uh, lintels in there. I mean, they're plenty strong enough. All that's going on top of here is a uh, truss roof. I'm not gonna hand cut this just because just of time and the cost of timber at the minute. So I'll get those trusses ordered now. I know what my overall plates are. Um, yeah, so, so really pleased, got the center Noggins all the way through, got my bottom plates all, what I've done here, you can see is uh, I put my little packer in underneath each stud and I've put a couple of screws, skew screws down so it's sort of joined these two plates together. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, what I've got to do, which I haven't done yet, but I'll do when it gets a bit further on in the build, is um, resin anchor these plates down to the concrete. Um, not too worried about it taking off at the minute um, because it's just, uh, you know, a frame so uh, yeah so all in all uh, really pleased with that it's been a, obviously as I said a much better day today than yesterday so this is eventually going to have a, a, a stud wall come through here because it's going to be split into two parts you've got the garage part on this side and a sort of utility lean to garden store on this side and then moving forward onto that well this is the end that sort of faces the former part of the garden we're having a the gable ends on here the roof is pitching up and down across that way then what we're going to do on here excuse this bench thing um, we're coming out another 3.5 meters here um, and i'm going to put another um, i'm going to make this out of probably some heavy duty posts maybe oak posts and pitch another roof up and down and that'll cut into this main roof and this will be then be a deck area out here so you know when it's done it's going to look fabulous so there we go that's the end of this part of the video um, I'm not working on this day in day out I've got some other jobs I've got to do and I'll be back I'll be back on this one uh, maybe in a week or so to probably start the featherboarding and um, while I'm waiting for the trusses to come so I hope you've uh, enjoyed it and found it interesting thanks for watching